and welcome to your Bobby City News Update for Thursday, April 7. So glad you could join us. One of the Caribbean's largest non-alcoholic beverage manufacturers is proposing a tiered tax system to replace the 20% tax on sugar-sweetened beverages imposed at the start of the month. Director of SM Jalil Beverages Barbados, Dr. Mikhail Mohammed, says he fully supports the fight against non-communicable diseases and obesity, but he insists the tax should be fairly applied. I try to encourage the government to do is to utilize the World Health Organization standards as an international benchmark so that products that are above the 22.5 grams of added sugar per 250 ml, they are taxed at a disproportionately high rate because those are very bad for you. Or no, I should say they are unnecessarily high in terms of sugar content. But the products that are below 22.5 grams per 250 ml serving size, then why not make them VAT free and tax free? So in addition to the fact that you educate the population, that these products are in fact better for you because they have less free sugars, but you give an economic or a financial incentive by making these products cheaper so that people can then have healthier products at a more affordable price. So you not only educate them, you get them to trade down from these unnecessarily high sugar content products to more healthier products. Dr. Mohammed added that authorities should not only target the beverage sector, but go even further to tackle other sectors producing highly sweetened products. He says his company has a plan to help the island's children in particular to drink more water. It's also disproportionate or inequitable to single out a subsector of the economy in terms of beverages that represent less than 10% of free added sugar consumption, where 90% of the free added sugars are unabated or, or, or untaxed or that there is no uh, move to reduce sugar contents in those products from a governmental perspective. What they're doing is disproportionately taxing one subsector. Now, I understand that carbonated soft drinks and, uh, you know, are, are very high and are empty calories. I'm a medical doctor. I understand all of these things. But all I'm just saying is from an equity perspective, they should have a more holistic approach to show that they're not singling out one particular subsector that represents less than 10% of the sugar consumption in Barbados. Uh, in, a, in addition to that, I, I would say um, that uh, as a corporate uh, entity, we obviously take this very seriously. And I, together with my brand ambassador, Alison Hines, we are trying to reach out to the ministries of health, the ministries of education, to the government as a whole, to principals, to allow us to do educational programs uh, with schools because we would love to get everybody to drink pure oxygenated water instead of carbonated soft drinks, my own included, at all levels of school, primary school, secondary school, tertiary education. We really want everybody to take the Cure Challenge, drink Cure Oxygenated Water instead of carbonated soft drinks. And in other news, this World Health Day, amid a surge in COVID-19 cases due to the Omicron B.A. 2 subvariant, the director of the Pan-American Health Organization, Dr. Carissa Etienne, urged countries to remain vigilant. At her weekly press briefing on Wednesday, she noted that while COVID cases and deaths had dropped across much of the region, new infections are beginning to rise. In the Caribbean and across North America, Omicron is becoming the predominant variant circulating in our communities. Along with increasing tourism and travel and the relaxation of public health measures, Omicron circulation is driving the new COVID surges that we are seeing. We cannot ignore the risk of further COVID-19 surges in other parts of the region. We must face it together with caution, but also with confidence because we know what it takes to protect our people. She added that vaccination is still the best bet against COVID-19 and urged countries to close vaccination gaps. The elderly and immunocompromised remain the people most likely to be hospitalized following COVID infection. Omicron has made it crystal clear that vaccines are our best bet to protect them and everyone else from severe disease and save lives. More than 685 million people in our region have completed their COVID vaccination schedules. And 50 countries and territories have already begun to deliver additional doses and booster shots to their eligible populations. 
The addition of this booster dose to the primary series is key for people at higher risk for severe COVID. The Barbados Olympic Association has rolled out plans to increase fund support to Barbados' athletes and teams who currently compete across the various sporting disciplines. Vice President of the BOA, Cameron Burke, made the announcement at a news conference on Wednesday. Barbados Olympic Association is pleased to announce today the continuation of its annual athletic funding subsidy program for the new 2021 to 2024 Olympic quadrennial. During this cycle, there will be a new initiative as we launch the Road to Paris program, which also includes the Olympic Solidarity 2024 scholarship program. This initiative is being used to demonstrate the BOA's commitment to improving athletic performances and increasing medal count as we strive to strengthen our relationships with the national federations and the athletes. To facilitate this initiative, the BOA has allocated the sum of $960,000, of which 19% will represent the, contrib the contribution from Olympic Solidarity. These funds will be disbursed among 12 athletes identified and approved by their national federations and the BOA. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Morby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. Regional news, Trinidad and Tobago's Health Minister Terence Dale Singh believes the region must be prepared for future pandemics and ensure the issue of vaccine inequity is no longer a problem. Speaking at Carfer's meeting of chief medical officers on Wednesday, he stressed the issue of vaccine access during the COVID-19 pandemic must not go unnoticed. There will be another pandemic. Health Minister Terence Dial Singh recalled some of the events that transpired over the last two years where small states in the region suffered major issues in gaining access to life-saving vaccines. And it is incumbent upon us to make sure that the future pandemics that hit, whether it is viral, bacterial or whatever, that we have equitable access to whatever medications, vaccines, therapies, PPE that all other countries can enjoy. And even though the pandemic is ongoing, Mr. Dial Singh said this country is preparing for the next one and hopes to tackle the issue of non-communicable diseases. Of the over 3,000 souls who have died, 83% of those persons were persons with comorbidities. Think about how many lives could have been saved if just 20% of those persons either knew their condition as for the traditional healthcare system, the minister said the voluntary altruistic blood donations will be key to ensuring a more equitable system. On the international front, Ottawa will unveil Canada's 2022 budget today and new spending measures are expected. David Akin of Global Canada News looks at the demands. Previous Trudeau government budgets have really focused on a build back better theme, money to transform society and the world. But the mood has now shifted. Canadians are looking for a budget that eases the strain on their household finances. What we're seeing is that people have a very clear priority, and that is dealing with the cost of living. Ipsos asked 1,500 Canadians to pick three top priorities for next week's budget. Measures to help with the high cost of living top the list, with 53% naming that as a top three priority. 45% said lowering taxes is a top priority, and 40% wanted greater investments in health care. And while the war in Ukraine has exposed shortcomings in Canada's military readiness, just 11% said Ottawa should spend more on defense. 
That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.